Hi everyone, this is Dr. Rahul Haware from the channel Ask Applying Scientific Knowledge. Welcome in the third video of Rheology. And today we are going to find out why some liquids are viscous. So who are the contributing factors? So before that, uh, before going deep into the viscosity, uh, let me fulfill my promise in first and second video I was keep talking about we are using shear stress and shear strain in the viscosity and why are we using that well let me take you back again uh, to your childhood when somebody is asking you to draw a picture of water in let's say glass how are you drawing the picture of water well you are doing like this isn't it you are drawing the lines in parallel direction nobody is drawing the picture of water like this isn't it nobody is doing like that everybody is doing like this one why is that well you have certain intuition behind it you might have seen river which is flowing like in parallel direction isn't it and therefore you have this intuition of the leak in case of liquids we have certain plates they are arranged in parallel direction to each other okay that's the reason you are always drawing the picture of water like this now if you are to drink the water from the glass how are you doing well you have this glass and then you are tilting this glass why you are tilting because you need to apply force in this direction so water can come down isn't it nobody is applying force if you have to drink water let me clean this one because it will get a good picture if you have to drink water from this glass isn't it the water is like this you're not applying force in perpendicular direction then you have to make some hole here and then you will be able to drink this water isn't it like this like a spray but nobody is drinking water like that one that's life is life will be difficult so you are just simply tilting the water glass and you are able to drink it because and that's why these shear forces are important because we have these liquid plates always in parallel direction isn't it and that's why you are applying shear forces and not normal forces so i hope i have fulfilled the promise why are why in the world we are using shear stress and not normal stress in the rheology and that is absolutely true for all liquids they do have these plates liquid plates they do have these liquid plates so now i hope uh, it's clear now for you why in the world you are using shear stress and shear uh, strain relationship in rheology so with that i hope i have cleared your basic and now let's assume that we have these liquid uh, these liquid plates and it is a kind of another uh, analogy will be the deck of cards isn't it these cards are in parallel direction okay and here we have one assumption that this bottom layer this one is not gonna move it will remain stationary so it has no slip boundary conditions when i am saying no slip means it will not move at all okay it will remain stationary and that's not case with other liquid plates like liquid plate one two three four five six isn't it now let me take this again out and now what i decided i decided to apply force and which type of force again definitely i am applying shear force because that will be the only effective force in case of liquid and if i apply force on this top layer what will happen there will be deflection isn't it that will move and 
then what will happen on the second layer well the first layer will move really in great distance but second layer it will have it will experience less force because some force got absorbed by this first layer and what are remaining force is there it will help to displace this liquid plate isn't it same thing will happen on the third one like whatever the force has been applied shear force has been applied by first plate second plate and remaining will be gone on this third plate and then there will be less deflection it will be here more deflection here it will be more deflection then what will be on the fourth one well first has applied uh, sorry first has absorbed certain shear stress second will be absorbing remaining stress whatever it experienced then third will absorb remaining stress which uh, will be remained after the stress applied by first and second layer and in case of fourth it will be remaining stress that has been absorbed by that is remained after absorption by first layer second layer third layer isn't it so the deflection will be less because force will be less and so on so here at the very first layer from the bottom it will have very less deflection and stationary layer plane it will not move that's we have assumed already isn't it so we'll get certain kind of velocity profile here we'll get certain kind of velocity profile after application of stress and here what's happening ex exactly isn't it the first plate is moving long way second will be little bit uh, second will be little bit less third will be little bit less fourth will be little bit less than that and fifth will be very less and we can get certain kind of velocity profile isn't it and these lines they indicate the magnitude of velocity so this line that indicates the magnitude of velocity and what is the velocity by the way let's recap our high school physics so velocity is equal to distance over time okay now <clears throat> we know that we are applying shear force in this direction to move this liquid but as you remember there is a newton's third law of motion there will be oppositely working forces in that of shear force isn't it and that force will have same magnitude of that of shear force and that force that opposing force is responsible for creating resistance to flow the liquids and the magnitude of that force actually is called as viscosity the magnitude of that force is called as viscosity so now let's go back to our example of honey and water so why water is flowing easily because the magnitude of this opposing force is less in case of water so i'll just draw like a small arrow here but in case of honey it is really high isn't it the magnitude of that force is very high in case of honey and that's why there is a more resistance here we have less resistance because the magnitude of this force is less in case of water so opposing or resistance forces to the shearing forces are quite high in case of honey and measurement of that magnitude of that force is called as viscosity okay so do you understand why in the world we are getting viscosity or why some liquids are viscous because of this opposing forces to the shearing force so once we have this background now let's clean this viscosity profile so let's say ac is the distance between the planes isn't it that denotes the distance between the planes and when you are applying the shearing stress you are getting certain deflection that is c dash and let's again clean this one let's get rid of this viscosity lines we know that now and 
the distance between C and C dash is delta x and A, this is the angle of deflection because that's the way it's deflecting, isn't it? Think about the water glass here, the way you are deflecting. This is the water glass and then when you are deflecting it to drink the water, so there is a certain deflection, isn't it? That's exactly what I'm talking now in order to drink the water. Okay, so what is A to C? The distance is delta y, the separation of or separation between the plates and delta x the deflection. And now we have to bring your knowledge of mathematics from high school, trigonometric knowledge. And at that time you might be thinking why the why in the world I am learning this trigonometry. Well, you can use that trigonometry in higher education. That's the reason you are you got introduced to the trigonometry. So, what is a tan theta? Opposite. This is a tan theta. Opposite divided by adjacent. opposite side that is all this is opposite side and this is adjacent side and that's the tan theta and that's why it is come delta x divided by delta y well if this angle of deflection is fairly small then this tan theta is equal to delta theta so i'm just plugging that one instead of tan and i'll just write delta theta because that's what we are actually calculating isn't it that's a tangent angle now, I just told you what is the velocity, distance over time. And I'm just rearranging this equation. Distance is equal to velocity over time. And just denote that change in distance by delta x, change in velocity by delta u, and delta t is change in time. And I can plug this one here, isn't it? What will I get? delta u times delta t divided by delta y is equal to delta theta. So what it suggests, this angular displacement when you are tilting your glass while drinking the water is not only dependent on the velocity and it's not dependent only on the dy. What is a dy? Separation between the plates, isn't it? This is the separation between the plates but it also depends on time so it depends on three factors this angular displacement angular displacement it depends on three factors what are those three factors one is the velocity second factor is the separation between the plates separation between liquid plates and third one is time third one is time okay that's very important to know because this time factor is extremely useful when your material is highly viscous it is not that useful for Newtonian liquids I mean it is also useful because there is another type of viscosity you are measuring and we will come to that so in all viscosities let me take that back. In all viscosities, the, these three factors are very important. Velocity, separation between the liquid plates and time. So in case of fluids, we must now correlate shearing rate and shearing stress. And when there is a rate function, when there is a rate, it means that it depends on time. It is a function of time. Okay. So shearing rate is denoted with this uh, symbol gamma over dot and we are limiting this function delta theta over delta t and I'm just plugging this equation into this one and I'm getting delta u times delta t divided by delta t times delta u uh, time is going out now so there are only two factors are remaining delta t over delta y uh, sorry delta u over delta y and what is that delta u is the viscosity and delta y 
is the separation between the plates okay so when shearing stress is directly proportional to the shearing rate so shearing stress is force over a shearing rate delta u over delta y i know that there is no time factor here because that time has been cancelled out but it will come into picture believe me so tau it is shearing stress is always denoted with the symbol tau tau is directly proportional to gamma or, or dot and i just want to get rid of this proportionality sign so what i can do well i can write equal sign and then some constant and that constant is called as eta and that is a coefficient of viscosity and that's the way we are quantifying the viscosity it depends on how we quantify for different liquids newtonian and non-newtonian non-newtonian liquids and we'll see that in next video so i hope you have enjoyed this video so please consider subscribing our channel and share this video with your friends and they can also take advantage of uh, this explanation and looking forward to meet you in next video thanks for watching